Good morning, everyone. If you will please stand with me and open your hymnals to page 93. We're going to sing the first, second, and fourth verse of It Came Upon a Midnight Clear. Page 93.
this startling announcement that the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. What a miracle. At the same time, when you and I place our faith in Jesus Christ and invite Him to come to live within us, the Holy Spirit comes upon us and the power of God overshadows us and the life of Jesus is born within us. We do not conceive a physical life like Mary did, but rather the spiritual life of Jesus in the person of the Holy Spirit. It is the indwelling, powerful person of the Holy Spirit who sets me free from the habits of sin. But the power I possess to live a life pleasing to God is directly related to how much control of my life I give to the Holy Spirit. 1 John 3.24 says, By this we know that He abides in us by the Spirit whom He has given us. When the Holy Spirit comes into you at your invitation, you receive as much of Him as you will ever have. You do not get a little bit of Him and then a little bit more at later experiences. Since He is a person, you cannot get Him in pieces. You either have all of the Holy Spirit or you do not have none of the Holy Spirit. Why is it then that he seems to get us in pieces? He comes to us unconditionally while we surrender to him conditionally. We give him our Sundays but not our Mondays. We give him our actions but not our attitudes. We give him our relationships but not our reputations. We give Him our time, but not our thoughts. We give Him our burdens, but not our bodies. We give Him our prayers, but not our pleasures. We give Him our crisis, but not our children. We give Him our health, but not our hearts. Would you drop the conditions and give Him all of you? Amen. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the Lord Jesus that came in the form of a little baby, and lay down his life that we might have life. And Lord, we thank you that the Holy Spirit came upon Mary uh, and the miracle of the birth of, of, of Jesus, Lord. We thank you that the Holy Spirit came upon each one of us if we have by faith uh, repented of our sins and trusted in Christ as our personal Savior. And Father, I just pray that we would all realize this morning that we have all of the Holy Spirit, not just a little bit, but all of him to help us through this time, through this life through the hardships that come up. And, and, and Lord, we just thank you for, for giving us all of yourself. And Lord, we just pray for our service today that all that we say and do would just bring honor and glory to the Lord Jesus Christ. In his sweet name we pray. Amen. Amen. You can remain seated as you open the hymnals to page 91. We're going to sing the first, second, and fourth verse of Silent Night. <laughs>
this morning. I hope it, it's trying to warm up in here. The thermostat's not completely caught up yet, but so good to see all of you here. Um, just a few announcements this morning. This morning I'm going to be preaching on forgiveness. And then um, because of the holidays, we won't have a Wednesday service again until January the 4th. We usually take the Wednesday before and after Christmas off. So January 4th will be our next Wednesday midweek service. And then this coming weekend, Saturday, is Christmas Eve. Um, so we've moved our Sunday service from Christmas Day to Saturday, Christmas Eve at 11 o'clock. And we'll have a Christmas Eve communion service. We've got some special things planned and looking forward to a, a great um, Christmas Eve service on Saturday at 11 o'clock. So make sure you make note of that Saturday instead of Sunday this week. Um, and then... January 1st, the next Sunday, we'll, even though it's New Year's Day, we'll, we'll crank everything back up as normal. We'll have Sunday school as well as church. Now, on this, I guess you've heard the weather report. Um, it's going to be mighty cold, but we're, I'm going to come up Friday and turn the heat on and get the building warm. So um, hopefully everyone will, will still be able to make it on Saturday at 11. And, and, and they're talking about some inclement weather possibly, but hopefully that will be gone or miss this one. Uh, but we look forward to seeing you. I hope you'll bring somebody, bring your family with you if they're in, uh, already at your house. And, and we look forward to a good Christmas Eve service. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, if you will please stand with me and open the hymnals to page 86. We're going to sing the first, second, and fourth verse of O Little Town of Bethlehem. <laughs>
18 or sermon notes in the bulletin. If you want to follow along with us, it has the scripture on it. Um, I want to remind you once again that Jeff is videoing our service and it's available on YouTube. And you may have a friend or a loved one that may need to hear today's message. So spread the word. Um, just go to YouTube on the internet and search for my name, Wendell Burdett. And you can pull up this sermon and, and, and over a hundred others as well. The Santa Claus at the mall was very surprised when a young lady about 25 years old walked up and sat on his lap. Santa doesn't usually take requests from adults, but she smiled very nicely at him. So he said, okay, you can ask for something, but it has to be for someone other than yourself. What do you want for Christmas? And the young lady said, something for my mother. And he said, well, that's very nice. That's very thoughtful of you. What do you want me to bring to your mother? Without blinking, she replied, a son-in-law. <laughs> Why should I forgive him, Lord? You know what he did to me. You know how he betrayed me and wronged me. He or she did this and that. And they left me broken hearted and humiliated. So you tell me because it sure doesn't make sense to me. Why should I forgive him? And God says because I have forgiven you. But I'm your son or your daughter God. And you know what he did to me. You've heard me cry. You've felt my pain and my anger and my fear. So why should I forgive him? And again, God says, because I have forgiven you. But Lord, you know how much heartache and trouble all of this has caused us as a family, especially the children. I can't even bear to think about this person that has caused all this pain, much less forgive them. But I have forgiven you, and you must forgive him. But Lord, you've seen the results of what he did to us. I'm so embarrassed. I can't even hold my head up in public. I've just got so much bitterness balled up inside of me. How can I even begin to think about forgiving him? How can I possibly do this? And God says, my grace is sufficient for thee. And my power is made perfect in weakness. That's good, Lord, because I certainly can't do it on my own. I need you to help me to let down my pride and help me to be willing to forgive. Oh, but wait a minute, Lord. He's never even had any remorse or even asked to be forgiven. Uh, he's proud of what he's done. So until he asks for forgiveness, I don't have to forgive him, do I? And God says, that doesn't matter. Forgive him anyway. You know, forgiveness sometimes can seem like a superhuman task. It's what our Heavenly Father asks us to do, but not without equipping us to do it. Uh, many of us have never realized that or experienced that because we are not even willing to even try. We let our pride get in our way. Uh, we say, they hurt me so bad, I will never get over it. And yet, forgiving those who have hurt us is an act of obedience and love for God. And we should be willing to forgive others no matter how big the offense because of our love for the Lord. After all, He forgave us. It will keep us from becoming bitter. A bitter, unforgiving spirit can not only make our lives miserable, but it will even affect those around us, especially our families of which we were trying to protect from this pain in the first place. Somebody else has hurt them, and now we are without even realizing it because of our bitterness. And then just think about what a toll all of this has on our health. It is a killer to our health, and it is a killer to our joy. As I prayed and studied for, for this message, I was very much aware that it could possibly bring out some pain and discomfort amongst those of us here today, including myself and those who may be watching online, and we've all been there before, have been hurt before, and sometimes it just seems easier if we just push it aside and not think about it. 
But you know, when we do that, it keeps us from doing what God has asked us to do, and that is to for forgive others who have hurt us or sinned against us, just like God has forgiven us of our many sins and shortcomings. God's grace and God's mercy is unlimited, and therefore we too should forgive. Now this is nothing new to us today. Most of us learned this from the Bible when we were little children, and we know to do it, but are we doing it? Uh, maybe if you were like me, you don't even want to think about it. You would rather just turn a deaf ear to what I'm saying today and, and not have to revisit some old pain that you've tried to forget about and bury for good. But let me explain something to you. You and I may have thought about that we have buried something, but until we deal with it the way that God says, has told us to, to, to deal with it, then we really haven't done so. It's going to resurface again and again, and it's probably going to hurt more each time until we actually forgive them. A pastor was in a revival meeting when he visited a man who once had been active in church, but due to a dispute with a fellow church member, he had quit attending church many years ago. And the pastor reasoned with him at length about the need for forgiveness and returning to church. And reluctantly, the man agreed, and they prayed together. And, but when he was leaving, he followed him to the car, and he said, Now I'll forgive him, but all I want is for him to stay on his side of the road, and I'll stay on mine. Now did he really forgive him? Obviously not. Another man lay on his deathbed, harassed by fear because he had harbored hatred against another. And he sent for the individual with whom he had this disagreement years before, and then he made amends and overtures of peace. And the two of them shook hands in friendship, but as the visitor left the room, the sick man raised himself up and said, Now just remember, if I get over this, the old quarrel stands. You know, we don't have to go at this alone. We, we can ask God to help us to forgive others and to show, and He will show us how to do this. We, we may need to pray this prayer every day for as long as it takes until we learn how to let go of the past and forgive others. Remember how our Heavenly Father has forgiven us over and over and over again? Uh, this Christmas, as we ponder what gifts to give to others, what Christmas gifts to give. Let's give the gift of forgiveness. Let's give the gift of forgiveness. Now what is it that God's Word has to say about us forgiving others? Look with me at Matthew chapter 18. We're going to read verses 21 through 35. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother when he sins against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but seventy-seven times. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. As he began the settlement, a man who owned, owed him ten thousand talents was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered him that he and his wife and his children and all that he had be sold to repay the debt. The servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay back everything. The servant's master took pity on him and canceled the debt and let him go. But when that servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him, Be patient with me and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. When the other servants saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed and went and told their master everything that had happened. And then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant, he said, I canceled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? In anger, his master turned
turned him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all he owed. And then Jesus said, This is how my heavenly Father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother from your heart. Now look at those last words. Unless you forgive your brother from your heart. Just words is not enough. You have to mean it in your heart. How many of times should we forgive our brothers? Seventy times seven. Uh, how many times has the Lord forgiven us? Probably 70,000 times seven. And He will forgive us again if we fail Him. So Jesus told this parable how, of how a king was willing to forgive one of his servants a debt that he owed, but then the servant turned right around and refused to forgive a debt, a much smaller debt, that was owed to him by someone else. Isn't that how we are in us so much? But then we are unwilling to forgive others. A man named Abe Lemons was asked if he was bitter at Texas athletic director DeLoss Dodds, who fired him as the Longhorns basketball coach. He replied, not at all, I'm not bitter, but I do plan to buy a glass bottom car so I can watch the look on his face when I run him over. <laughs> now here's a serious one. This past summer, the Columbus Dispatch carried a story about a couple from Hopkinsville, Kentucky, whose son was killed by a drunk driver. For more than two years, Frank and Elizabeth Morris dedicated their entire lives to punishing the drunken driver who had killed their only child. Driven by hatred, they monitored his every court appearance. Uh, they followed him to the county jail to make sure he was serving his weekend sentences and watched his apartment to try to catch him violating his probation. We wanted him in prison, Mrs. Morris said. We wanted him dead. Tommy Pegues, the young man who caused the fatal crash, still gets a lot of attention from the Morrises. They drive him to church twice a week and then often set a place for him at their dinner table. Unable, unable to find satisfaction through revenge, the couple recently decided to forgive Mr. Pegues and try to rebuild his life along with their own. She said, the hate and bitterness I was feeling was destroying me, Mrs. Morris said. I needed to forgive Tommy to save myself. Since the Morrises made their decision to befriend him, Pegues, 26 years old, has joined their church, quit drinking, and become an active lecturer for Mothers Against Drunk Drivers. In verse 35, Jesus said that our Heavenly Father will treat us the same way unless we are unwilling, unless we are willing to forgive. In Matthew 6, 14 and 15, Jesus said, For if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. This, my friend, is serious business. Now, I'm not sure if we take this seriously enough, but we should. Uh, these are the very words of our Lord and Savior as recorded in the Word of God. And Jesus said that you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So for us to give the gift of forgiveness this holiday season to someone who has wronged us would, would surely be a most wonderful gift for us to give. It would be a gift that would set free the one who receives this gift. But you know what? Think about this. I believe that it would be us, the one who gives this gift of forgiveness, that would actually be set free. Uh, we would be the greater beneficiaries if we choose to give it this year. We all like to buy gifts for ourselves, whether we admit it or not, don't we? Uh, so what greater gift could we give ourselves but to forgive someone who has hurt us maybe even many, many years ago? Uh, to be able to relieve ourselves of the bitterness and hard feelings that we harbored for so long. Uh, will you do this this Christmas? Will you do this today? Uh, what a, a wonderful Christmas that we could all have if we were to deal with some of 
the hard feelings today. If you are just willing to try, I promise you that God will help you. He's not going to ask you to do something that He won't empower you to do it. Uh, he will see you through it if you just ask. You better believe He will. Now, does this mean that it will be easy? No, of course not. Especially the more bitter that you are or the longer that you've harbored this hurt and pain, it's not going to be easy. But I promise you that if you are willing to do it, and if I'm willing to do it, then the end result will be worth it all. But getting there may be a little tough. But God will see us through it. Now, for some people, this may sound strange, but for some people, the greatest need is to forgive God. Now, there are things that happen in life for which we hold God responsible. We blame God for things. Now, it's not always proper to reason whether God needs forgiveness or not. Of course He doesn't. Uh, the point is that we may need for Him to be forgiven in our own hearts and minds. And all of us have been hurt, most likely many, many times. And there have been times that we've gotten over it and other times that we've not gotten over it. Times that amends have been made and other times that relationships have ended. Times that others have asked for forgiveness and times that they have mocked us. And all of us, including myself, have struggled most likely for years with hard feelings towards certain people. Uh, so let me ask you this. Has anyone here today harbored ill feelings toward another relative. Uh-oh, now I'm getting money nosy, aren't I? Uh, wh what about other church members? Maybe at a, your current church or a former church. It's, it's never easy to dig up old hurts and try to deal with them when you feel shortchanged and you feel that you have every right to be mad forever. The one that's wronged you isn't knocking down your door to make amends after all. So why should you bring up the past again? You know, in some situations, it may not even be best to open up a can of worms for someone that you know is going to be contrary. But in your own heart, you need to be willing to forgive them and then move on. It may not do a whole lot of good to look up old acquaintances, but just forgive them in your heart. I'm sure I've told you this story before. My sister is a Christian counselor and for many years she worked at Grace Ministries International in Marietta before she ventured out on her own but she used to talk about the empty chair she said you can take an empty chair it may be someone that's already passed away or or someone that, that lives far away or someone you've not spoken to in years but you can take an empty chair and speak to that chair as therapy and and talk to that person and, and confront them and blame them or or for, blame them and then forgive them. And I remember hearing about this for years and years. And then one day I was flipping through the channels on the TV. I don't usually flip through channels like most men do all the time, but I, I think the Lord wanted me to see this. I was flipping through the channel once one time, and, and I came across this movie. And right when I flipped the channel, it showed this young girl in the floor on her knees in front of an empty bean bag. And she had a big plastic wiffle ball bat, and she was just beating that wiffle, beating that bean bag with that wiffle ball bat as tears were streaming down her face. And I knew immediately what I was watching. She was doing this same act of the empty chair. It's only human nature for us to be angry with others when they hurt us or, or they hurt our loved ones, but it's God's nature that we eventually get over it and that we are willing to forgive them just as God has forgiven us. Even if they don't care if we forgive them or not. But we, we have God's nature if we've been uh, saved, if we've trusted in Christ as our Savior. What about when they take advantage of the elderly and afflicted or even still from the dead? What about when it happens to your parents? or your children, or your spouse that is being abused. Doesn't that make it okay for us not to be willing to forgive? And God said, but I forgave you. Some years ago, after a vigorous brotherly and sisterly disagreement, three children retired to bed 
only to be aroused at 2 o'clock in the morning by a terrific thunderstorm. So hearing an unusual noise, the mom called out to find out what was going on, and a little voice answered, we are all in the closet forgiving one another. Another little boy disobeyed his mother, but his conscience began to hurt him, and he was sneaking up to his room when his mother saw him. And she said, where are you going, Frank? And he said, to my room to talk to God. And she said, is it something you can talk to me about? And he said, yes, it is. But he said, you'll just scold and punish me while God will forgive me and forget about all of it. Out of the mouths of babes. Look with me at Colossians 3, verses 12 through 17. It says, Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your heart, such as members of one body, you are called to peace. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom and as you sing songs, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude and in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. Sometimes it's tough to give one another. Uh, we must live as children of God and, and forgive others no matter how bad they have hurt us or how miserable they have treated us or how long that you've been harboring, harboring this bitterness because God has forgiven us. This is the next verse, the last verse on your notes to be your memory verse for the week. Romans 12, 18 says, If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Yeah. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Uh, let me tell you about someone who was wronged more than any of us can even begin to imagine. We think that we've been abused, and we think that we've been wrong, and wrongfully accused, and lied to, and lied about, and so on and so on. But the Lord Jesus Christ was abused, and wronged, and falsely accused, and beaten and ridiculed and spat upon. And this is one time for sure that it can be said that he had done nothing to warrant what was happening. Jesus has endured more heartache and pain than all of us put together, and yet he was willing to forgive. And has had to endure all this wrongdoing and hurt. He did it all for your sake and for my sake. He, he did nothing wrong. He was perfect. But he took upon himself the sins of the world. Now was this fair? He had every right to take his ball and go home. Or take his cross. But he loved us too much to abandon us. And in spite of our sin, in spite of our wrongdoings, Christ loved us enough that he chose to forgive us and to save us from our sins. And by dying for us, by shedding his very own precious blood to wash us from our iniquity. And even though still today we fail him and we sin and we hurt him very deeply, when we do, he still forgives us again and again, over and over again. Even though we struggle with forgiving others, he chooses to forgive us. And we don't deserve it. Why, well, he even chose to forgive those who had crucified him. Uh, he, which actually, it was all of us and our sin that nailed them to that cross. But, but you know what? He even chose to forgive them in the midst of his crucifixion. While he was dying, he uttered these words, Forgive them, for they know not what they do. So we need to think about this, this Christmas season. 
when we refuse to forgive someone of some little petty issue that arises or resurfaces during the holidays. We, we need to think about that as we make our gift list and think about what present that we're going to give to whom. Give the gift of forgiveness. Give the gift of forgiveness. Step it up a notch and even give the gift of forgiveness to someone who may not even have been on your Christmas list for many, many years because they hurt you a long time ago. Maybe they even, they've never even asked for forgiveness or acknowledged any wrong. No, they were, you were hurt in a great way. Forgive them anyway. Give them the gift of forgiveness. And in doing so, you will end up giving yourself the gift of peace. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for allowing us to look in your precious word once again today. And Father, even though it steps on all of our toes, including my own, Lord, to think about how unwilling we are to forgive others when you've forgiven us for so much, no matter who we are or what we've done or how many times we've done it, Lord, you forgive us over and over again. But we just thank you for your love and mercy and grace. And we just pray that you would help us to, to turn around and extend that same mercy and forgiveness to others that may have hurt us. Lord, I pray for that one that's really hurting this morning. Uh, from hearing the reality that you want us to forgive people no matter what they've done. And Lord, I just pray that we would all reach out to you and, and look to you for the strength that we need to do this. And Lord, I pray for broken relationships to be mended this Christmas season in families and in churches and with all of us, Lord, with friends. And Lord, we just thank you for what you're going to do. We thank you for holding us in our pain as we heard and think about this. Thank you for being there and promising to never leave us nor forsake us. Well, we just love you and thank you again for forgiving us. In Jesus' sweet name we pray. Amen. If you will please stand with me and open your hymnals to page 308. We're going to sing Pass Me Not, O Gentle Savior. Page 308.
until the next day. I think yesterday, about 2.30, he passed away. Um, I talked to Gene during Sunday school, and Darlene is going to Parrot Funeral Home today sometime. Um, and they're, they're not, he's going to be cremated, so most of the family's wanting to put it off till after Christmas. But I think one of them is wanting to go ahead and get it over with since she don't know what the arrangements will be. Um, but pray for Darlene. She's um, probably grew up in this church, I'm, I'm imagining. They've been here many times with her mom, um, the grandchildren, Katie, who Jean lives with, and Tommy and Bree, I think. So pray for them. Um, Mildred, I hadn't talked to her, I emailed her during Sunday school, but um, Mildred's not feeling well. Buddy's at home with a sore throat. Pray for them. Um, continue to pray for Mary Ann Wilson. Five of us went to see her Wednesday and had a good visit with her as she's recovered from her um, hip surgery. I was with Mary Ann's brother's back in the hospital, I believe. So. I've got this card from Carol and Tavante. It says, from my church family, from Carol and Tavante, that she wanted me to share with you a special thank you. Every kindness has a part in bringing joy to someone's heart. And if you can see these big, huge letters, I love my church family. I love you, my church family. Carol and Tavante. So we just say thank you to everyone that, that helped with them. Benny's and Becky, um, Benny's granddaughter's funeral was Friday, Kimberly, 42 years old, and they, they had her funeral on Friday, so pray for that family. Yeah, and Crystal's traveling back home to Kentucky today, so pray for her, traveling. Her sister, Crystal, 38 years old, is battling cervical cancer and driving back home to Kentucky. So pray, pray for our son-in-law, Richard Thrasher. All right, any other prayer questions you got? Same change. Okay. All right. If that's all, we'll hopefully see you Saturday. I probably will. Okay. Thanks, you probably will. I'm back. <laughs> Katie's making a habit out of this. <laughs>